Hi guys, it is Dr. Pam, and we're going to talk a little about Freud today. I know that everybody thinks that he was a little weird, and maybe he was. However, he was also known as the father of talk therapy. Um, before he came along, um, women, especially women, could be actually put in insane asylums because their husband was tired of them. Um, women had very little rights, and they really were... Um, locked up for little or no reason and could be locked up forever before that we used to use like ice baths to try to you know, get the the demons or the evil out of them we did some lobotomies you know screwing in and kind of figuring out what part of the brain right um actually we still do some of those now however with our laser technology there's really a, a lot safer way to uh, adjust parts of the brain that may be causing some difficulty but overall, Freud's goal was to bring the unconscious to the conscious. His theory was is that all of our uh, fears and dreams and uh, things we didn't remember from childhood were all down here. And this is where the problem was, that we, we didn't remember what was happening. So if he could help us recall the unconscious and bring it to the conscious, then we could work on it. So remember, all of his defense mechanisms were down there. So what he used is he used a couple of things that you'll probably see on the test. The thematic apprecession test, that is definitely one. Okay, so the TAT is, it's called a subjective as well as a projective test. So projective, because Freud said you were projecting it from your unconscious onto the picture, right? He would ask you what you see in a picture like this. And of course, whatever you said, then he would subjectively tell you that, you were wrong, right? So um, the part, that one of the difficult parts, and even now you might see on the test, is that we really can't prove um, any of his, his things, right? Because they're unconscious. So how can we prove some of those? So they're probably not the most reliable. However, he's very, very interested and really kind of opened the door of how we see psychology today. And probably one of the reasons that you have to take this test. I don't know. So anyway, so um, you can tell me whatever you think or as you're watching this video, um, you know, they're black and white and all of them are that way. So what he would ask you to do is, is create a scenario, right? He would ask you, so what do you think is happening in this picture? And then your job really was to tell him and based on what you told him is really kind of then what he would say, this what this means to you. So there was no right or wrong answer. That's why it's called subjective and projective because it's coming from your unconscious. The other one he used, of course, is going to be the Rorschach. It's also called the ink blot. That's been around forever and forever. Let me find an image there. I thought I had one. So the, again, my raw shot is also called the ink blot, um, and what that is looking at is again, um, it literally is an ink block. And what he's looking at is, do you know? Tell him what you see. The same sort of thing. So whatever you see in the picture, that is what you are bringing up from your unconsciousness. So again, you are projecting this, right, on to the picture. Things from your unconscious. So. That is the ink blot, the Rorschach, and the TAT, the manic apprehension test. Both of those are ways that are that Freud would believe. So whenever I see these terms, I know that they're going to be psychoanalytic, which was the longer term, or psychodynamic, which is the current term that we use now for the test, bringing the things from the unconscious to the conscious. He also used the incomplete sentence test. So you might see the Rotter's incomplete sentence test. Um, and it, that really looks at, you know, you're really going to fill in the blank. I like this. I think this again. So there's no wrong or right answers, right? Because this is the base on what you see and how you feel. So sports blank. When I was a child, right? My nerves, I can answer that one. My nerves are shot. Other people are great. I suffer needlessly. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> Uh, geometry at high school. So really whatever comes to your mind is what you're going to do. So that is the uh, Rodgers incomplete sentence test, but you might see any other complete sentence test as well.
Um, so the free association, so I hold up, uh, I say cat and you say dog, free association was actually uh, done by Carl Jung, right? The MBTI guy. However, he was still a psychoanalysis. So it's not by Freud, but many times he gets credit, but it's also anything that's unconscious. So uh, that's the free association. I mean, the goal is to say whatever comes to your mind the first thing, because he believed that was what's on your unconscious and you're, you're bringing it up, that you're just not aware of that. I think I mentioned last time that really that um, all of our defense mechanisms are unconscious as well. So Freud has a couple of theories. So let's do our id, ego, and superego and kind of talk about how we got there. So Freud said that we were born with our id, that my id is my, and if you've heard my other videos, right? Pleasure principle, oh, that's Janet Jackson in case you don't know, <laughs> okay? So, and if you're not old enough to know who Janet Jackson is, then I don't know what to tell you. So, <laughs> but he did say it was innate. Um, that's means instinctual. So according to Freud, right? If we, if we didn't eat, sleep and procreate, have sex, then there would be no life, right? Life would just stop. And that's true, right? Well, there'd be no life whatsoever. So my it is my devil. It says, Pam, I want it now. I want it. I want it. I want it now, right? My super ego is my angel. My angel says, never. Don't you dare ever, ever, ever. My super ego wants perfection. My id wants the devil. He wants what he wants and he wants it now. My ego is me, right? So when I'm looking at my ego defense mechanisms, ego strengths, ego dystonic or ego syntonic, that's me. So the question says, what part of the of Freudian structure are you working with? You're working with the ego, which is my reality principle. So my reality principle is always trying to avoid, you know, balance the id and the superego. Okay. So he doesn't want either one to win because superego life would never happen. We would stop procreating and we all can't live, go and chase all of our basic instincts. So, so that is Freud's theory, right? Of my id, ego, and superego. So we'll talk uh, about some of my Neo-Freudians in a future video, but remember my Neo-Freudians did not believe in the psychosexual development. They believed in the ego, but they did not believe in the id or the superego and the way that the psychosexual development occurs. Okay, so psychosexual development, right? So that is oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital. Right. Those were his theories. That is how he said um, that we grew up. So that is going to be one of the human development theories and kind of where we're shaped from. Pull that up. I have one that I usually like. I will tell you that I'm, I Google often, you see that, but be careful. Um, you know, you don't want to necessarily uh, believe what you read in something you found on Google, um, especially if it's totally opposite from what the textbook says. Okay, so I know despite what you've been heard or what you believe that everything on Facebook and everything on the internet is true, not quite the case, not quite. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so then, there we go. My defense mechanisms I went over. My psychosexual stages. Oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital. Old um, A, people love gold. Orphan Annie, pretty little girl. Those are the stages. He said that the first three stages are where the psychosexual development occurred. So oral, my mouth, anal, my bottom, and phallic is when the kids find the toy between their legs, right? Hey. Um, however, those are the only three phases. So when sexual development occurred, so by the age of seven, right, we should be fully developed. Um, so the oral stage, if you'll see, we're, we're born with our id, our ego develops at the oral stage and the super ego, which says no, 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 never. That evolved at the same time like the phallic stage did, right? So little kids, according to Freud, have found the toy box between their legs and they're excited and they're super egoic saying, don't you touch that. Never, never, never. You'll grow hair on your palms. 
right? I don't think that's true. Um, but definitely for Freud and for the quest, the test, you're only knowing, you're only asking what Freud knew or what F Freud suggested. It doesn't ask your opinion. Um, it's a reading test and it'll say according to Freud or according to psychoanalytic theory. And for the test, that's really what we need to know. So uh, what he said though, so let's say that my mother messed me up because it was always the mother in Freud's time. So in, in the oral stage, I could become fixated. Okay. So if I didn't get my oral needs met, right, they took me off the bottle too soon. I wasn't fed. I was force fed um, that my mouth, that that's one of my um, erogenous zones, right? And if it did not get filled, if I didn't um, get all I needed as a baby, then as an adult, I would still be looking to get that filled. Okay. So we'll see smoking, it says dependency, aggression. Uh, most often what I've seen on the test is uh, a, a woman who is overweight um, and she comes in and, you know, she keeps telling her therapist, well, I don't eat a lot. I don't recall eating that. Or I don't remember eating that. Right. So because Freud said it would be unconscious. Right. And she's trying to fill her oral phase because it, she was fixated there. Anal stage, same thing. So I always say if you were uh, the anal stage, right, if you were potty trained too soon, you've got a tight sphincter muscle. Um, so again, you're spending your adulthood trying to fix what, what your mom messed up. So then if I was toilet trained too soon or too harsh or maybe even too lax, then as an adult, then I may be obsessive. I may be stubborn. Um, I may be that, that whole anal retentive personality style, right? So that's because my mother uh, took me off the toilet too soon and have spent the rest of my life trying to keep my sphincter muscle tight. And of course, the phallic stage. So that is, again, so an abnormal family setting leading to unusual relationships with your mother and your father. Okay. So hopefully we get our phallic stage met. What he said, though, with our phallic stage, I think it's on this one. Oh, let's go back. So our phallic stage is where we're going to find our um, Oedipus stage. And I know it does start with a O, but it's pronounced E. So that's where we're going to find our Oedipus stage as well as our Electra stage. In my Oedipus stage, that is where I am going to pull this one up. In the Oedipus stage, that is the little boy is in love with his mother, right? Um, and what he's afraid of is having his penis cut off, right? The dad's going to find out and his penis is going to be cut off. In a question, what that looks like is, you know, the kid is having a, a surgery um, and there has to be a, a needle inserted in his groin. And what is he afraid of? And of course, that is not going to be um, a pain. The right answer is uh, mutilation, right? Because he's afraid his dad will find out, again, all unconscious. Electra, the girls have penis envy. They want to have a penis like their father. Okay. So those are Freud stages, oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital. My id, ego, and superego. My id is my devil. My superego is the, the um, angel. Yes, no, yes, no. Ego, right? That is me. That is how it works. Okay. Um, let's just go back and pick up a couple other things about Freud. Okay, so he started his um, study off with a case study. So you might see that on the test, or you might also see that in the research and assessment session. So a case study can be the study of something now or something in the past. It's a, an event, right? So he used the, the case study of Anna O, and that gives her real name. It wasn't his case. It was a, a case of his colleagues. Um, he wanted to try out like his, his new, um, newly uh, invented uh, theories of, of unconsciousness. So Anna O suffered from hysteria, a, a condition in which patients exhibit psycho, uh, physical symptoms, right? Paralysis, convulsion, hallucinations without any physical cause. We might call that today like a conversion disorder, right? So her doctor had treated had tried several things um, and treating Anna by helping her to recall her forgotten memories of traumatic events. 
Uh, during discussing with her, it, it is apparent that she had developed a fear of drinking when a dog she hated drank from her glass, and her other symptoms originated when caring for her sick father. She did not express uh, she did not express her anxiety for her illness, did, but, did, but she did not express it, but her body did later. So during psychoanalysis, right, bringing the unconscious to the conscious, um, she has opportunity to make the unconscious thoughts conscious and her par her par par she was no longer paralyzed. Okay, so that's the theory of Freud, and that's where it started with Anna O. The goal is to bring the unconscious to the conscious. And this is just another way of looking at it, right? So my id, all of those things are in my conscious. And it's dark and stormy for a reason, because he said, you know, your fear, unacceptable um, sexual desires, violent motives, all of those things are in your unconscious. This one says subconscious, but that is never the correct term. Subconscious is a term that um, people who are uh, lay people, people who are not in the profession can use. And conscious is the term that we use. And of course, then my pre-conscious, right? That's where it is. Those are things that we can bring up by ourselves. I wouldn't necessarily need an excellent psychoanalysis to pick it up. Okay. So again, this is a brief term about Freud. So just to kind of realize he's, he's not so bad, right? Uh, actual, very exciting of how we got here. And he was the father of talk therapy. Hope you found that extremely helpful. Uh, again, enjoy the shorts and hopefully I'll um, you'll see you again in one of my live groups, one of my face-to-face -face groups, or even in a future uh, video recording. Thanks a lot, guys. It's Dr. Pam, Academic Coaching for World Changers. And remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button also. Thanks.